All right, welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, we have uh, one problem in Chapter 8. Uh, this is a problem uh, involving work and energy, so hopefully you're going to work hard and you have enough energy to get through it. All right, so uh, first example, kind of a simple one. Uh, we got a pendulum, and that would be the pendulum in the horizontal position, and we're going to look at it at two other points in its motion. Uh, we'll call this point A and we'll call that point B and let's say I give you at point A it's got some starting velocity V naught and it's got a mass M and the length of the string is L. Okay, And um, we're going to find the following and I will give you numbers in a moment. Uh, we're going to find uh, the initial kinetic energy. We're going to find the final kinetic energy, the final velocity at point B, and the force of tension in the string at point B. All right. Um, now the numbers, I'll go ahead and throw those in here. Let me, let me tell you uh, V naught is 5 meters per second, L is 3 meters, and mass of the pendulum bob is 2 kilograms, which is about the same mass as your textbook. So it's your textbook swinging back and forth from a three meters is about 10 feet, 10 foot long string in the classroom here. All right, so, um, oh, and a couple other things. This angle here, we'll call that theta. This angle is different, we'll call it alpha. Let's say theta is 40 degrees and alpha is 30 degrees. All right, so we'll do what we can with variables and then we'll throw numbers in at the end. Okay, so uh, the initial kinetic energy, well that is really easy. <laughs> kinetic energy is one half m v naught squared, that's our k naught, and we have all those numbers. One half the mass is two and v is five and you square that and you get 25 joules. No calculator necessary. All right, um, now the rest of it, uh, a little more work. Okay, so um, we want to go, to find the final kinetic energy, we want to go from A to B, and we're going to use our conservation of mechanical energy formula, okay? That is K naught, so I'll kind of move that over. K naught plus U naught plus any work done by non-conservative forces equals K final plus U final, okay? Well, there's only two forces acting on the pendulum bob during the whole motion. Uh, there's gravity, which is a conservative force, which is part of your potential energy, so you're not going to worry about that one. That's going to go in here. You also have the tension in the string pulling on the, on the pendulum as it swings. That would be a non-conservative force, except it's not doing any work. Why not? Well, that tension is always perpendicular to the motion, and we know that work is the dot product of force and displacement. Uh, since that's at a right angle, that dot product is zero. So the tension doesn't do any work. It doesn't speed or up or slow down the pendulum bob, it just turns it, okay? So this term is zero in our, our work, okay? Uh, everything else, there's a K naught, we've got, we've got the number, there is gonna be a K final here, we're trying to find that, as a matter of fact, that's our unknown, um, potential energy, it depends on where you measure your heights from. So there are several convenient places to measure your heights. You could measure it from up here, from A, from B, or where the pendulum would be at the bottom. Okay? I am going to choose the horizontal, and because that then I can use theta and alpha directly. Um, and my potential energies, they will be negative. They're both below my zero, so I'm going to have, in my two terms, they'll end up being negative values. Once you've kind of done all that, though, it's, it's pretty easy. Okay, so our kinetic energy naught is 1 half m v naught squared, which we already got a number for that, it's 25. Our u naught is mgh. Now, if I'm calling this zero height, and I'll label that h equals zero, what's the height at point A? Well, it's negative, and it's just the length of the pendulum bob sine of the angle. 
sine of theta in this case. So that's going to be negative L sine theta. Okay? I'll throw my equals here, my kinetic energy final. I'm trying to find that. And then plus the final uh, potential energy. Well, that's, I'm looking at this height now for my MGH term. That height um, is L sine of these two angles added together. Okay, because now I got this right triangle here, which is both those angles. So it's plus mg negative L sine of theta plus alpha. Okay, and so I've got everything I need. I got all the numbers. Just got to find kf. So this we know that's 25 uh, minus m, which is 2. G is 9.8. Uh, L is 3. I got the minus there. There's my minus. Sine of that angle. First angle is 40. That equals k final plus, or I'll make it the minus. So I'll put the minus out front for us. Minus m is that. G is that. Times l is that. Sine of the two angles add together, which is 70. And you've got every number. You find k final. And I'll, you might want to check to make sure you can do the work. But if you do the work, you get 42 and a half joules. Uh, you would expect that to be higher than the initial kinetic energy of 25. We've lost some potential energy, so therefore we've gained some kinetic. Matter of fact, if another question said, how much potential energy do you lose? Well, it's the difference in these two numbers, 42 and a half minus 25, 17 and a half joules of uh, potential energy you just lost. That's 17 and a half joules of kinetic energy you just gained. Now, uh, for the velocity at this point, uh, that's really simple. If you got kinetic energy final, you just plug it into this equation. You solve for v. Now, we've got finals instead of initials, so it's v final equals, uh, you do 2 times the kinetic energy over the mass, and you square root to get the v, v squared out of there. And 2 times 42 and a half over the mass, which is uh, 2. So 2's drop out. You get root 42 and a half, which you plug and chug in your calculator, you get 6.52 meters per second. Okay. Now the last thing is the tension. What's the tension in the strings? This is a review problem. This is from a couple chapters ago. This is a dynamics problem. Uh, let's draw, if we're looking for a tension force. I'm going to draw an FBD. So here's our FBD. You've got tension acting this way, and you've got gravity acting that way. We want to split our forces up into two components, one that is radial and one that is parallel to the motion or tangent. So we want that. We want that. Uh, this angle here is uh, our Let's see. Um, well, OK, so that's tension. So if we split this up, that's tension. That's mg cosine of theta. And that is mg sine of theta. All right, now let's double check, make sure we got our theta right. Well, it's not theta, it's theta plus alpha. Let's make sure we've got that right, though. If that angle up there were 90, OK, then the component of gravity pointing this way would be 1. So we got this backward. If the pendulum bob, if the pendulum bob is hanging straight down, then theta plus alpha is 90. OK? And we know that the component of gravity that would be perpendicular in motion would just be mg. So if we got 90 degrees, which function gives us mg times 1. That's sine. So these are backward. So this is actually mg sine of theta. And this is mg cosine of theta. And it's theta plus alpha. Now, by the way, normally this is cosine and that's sine. The reason it's not in this case is, well, most of the time you got an incline, and your angle's measured from the horizontal. Well, here, we're measuring our angle down from the horizontal. 
Well, let's double check this here. When that angle's 90, okay, then I want my MG to be, the force down will just be MG. So when this angle's 90, the sine of 90 is one times MG, okay? Uh, and then the cosine of 90 degrees will be zero. At that point, when you're at the bottom, there'd be no tangential acceleration. You're at the, you're at the bottom, you're no longer speeding up, okay? All right, so um, a common error that people make is they say tension equals this component of gravity. And that would be true if the pendulum bob were stationary, but it's moving in a circle. So it is accelerating inward with some radial acceleration. So I do net force in the radial acceleration or in the radial direction equals MAR. Okay, the net force, well, you do toward the center of the circle is positive, so it's tension minus mg sine of theta plus alpha equals m, and then ar is v squared over r. Okay, so your tension is actually bigger than this. You end up with the following. You get mg sine of theta plus alpha plus m v squared over r. So that's the magnitude of your tension. And we can plug numbers in. Mass was 2, g is 9.8. We've got sine of 70 plus 2 times v squared, which is 6.52 squared over the radius, which is 3. And that will give us our tension. All right, we'll plug and chug. You want to check, make sure you can do this. All right, 2 times 9.8 sine 70 plus 2 times 6.52 squared over 3, and you get 46.8. So your tension is 46.8 newtons. All right, so there you go. So that example was using our conservation of energy equation uh, to figure out information about an object moving from point A to point B. Whenever you use this equation, this is one location, this is the other, this is what happens in between. Okay, in this case, we didn't have any non-conservative forces acting in between, so that, that term was zero. And then we use that information to do a little review problem where we found the tension of, in the string at this point in the motion. Thank you.